Well, good morning. Early morning here before we head to the office. I was going through some old videos on an external hard drive. Videos that I deleted off the YouTube channel. They weren't relevant anymore. Um, from 2015. And there are two videos I'm going to be sharing. A whole one and then part of another one here in this video. And the one that I'll share part of is... Uh, what Donald Trump said the first time he was running for president, um, 2015, in, at the uh, Al Smith dinner. The dinner that was put on in, to honor this Albert Smith guy, the first Catholic to run for president in America. And he was just completely voted down in no way. And uh, they make it really plain that the Catholics are all heard about this, you know, that uh, it's just a terrible thing that people were so prejudiced towards Catholics back then. Um, understand that America has religious liberty, and I get that, and Catholics, you know, have a right to do their thing and whatever, but no Catholic has a right to be in office, according to the original constitutional setup here in America. Uh, Catholics should never be in office. Why? Because they have dual allegiance. They have allegiance first to the Vatican, and then they have allegiance to their nation second. It comes in second like that. So they are basically guilty of treason um, because they are loyal to a foreign power before their nation. So when you have national interests, uh, they are trumped by the interests of the Vatican. So the papal pandemic interdict comes out and says, lock down the economy. You say, well, this will be bad for my country. Doesn't matter. You were given an order from the Vatican. That's exactly what happened. That's what exactly why Trump went along with things in 2020. He was given orders from the top and he followed like a good Catholic. Oh no, he's a Presbyterian. <laughs> Please. Um, no, you can be a Protestant and be a servant of the Vatican. Definitely, there's plenty of those. So I'm going to play the little clip here. He, uh, let me get out my little notebook here. I have it written down. His exact words of what he said. Back then, he was running for president the first time. He says, quote, We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Okay? Watch the video clip. Hmm. How about that? Isn't that interesting? But I want you to hear a few things from old Donald Trump here that, that the Bible believing Christians, a lot of them are starting to try to rally around this guy. We gotta vote for Donald Trump. We got, He's the best of the lesser of two evils. Uh, we gotta do our civic duty. Yeah. Let me just play a few things here for you. Now pay attention to what he says here. 16 minutes, 35 seconds. Listen to this. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Uh, what? We can also agree to stand up against anti-Catholic bias? Did you hear what he just said? He's going to stand up against anti-Catholic bias. I'll play it again for you here. Net, net. The Cardinal told me that's net, net, Donald, remember. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. To stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Well, then I guess I'm going to be in trouble, huh? Because I'm anti-Catholic. Because I'm against Roman Catholicism. Oh, but he's the lesser of two evils, right? Oh, you know, Hillary's such a wicked, you know, liberal and things, and she is. But he'll be so much better. They're both servants of the Vatican. Get it through your thick skulls, people. Well, how about that? All you uh, Bible-believing Christians out there, do you, do you like that? Do you want a president that would come in and say that he needs to... We need to, the government needs to take stands against anti-Catholic bias. Hmm. Shouldn't that be some calls for concern? Doesn't that sound like censoring of free speech? You know? And again, you know, just to clarify, I'm, uh, you know, I consider myself against Catholicism, not so much against somebody just because they're Catholic. I'm not going to attack anybody um, or whatever else. You know, my religion, my faith is... Uh, very much uh, I believe in liberty of conscience. I don't believe in just silencing people because I don't agree with them. But um, I'm going to play next a little video I did showing 
Trump's Jesuit connections to Fordham University, just his Wikipedia page back then. If you go to the same page now, one of you let me know about this and I checked into it and you're right. If you go to the same Wikipedia page and they removed Fordham over on the sidebar in the little quick synopsis of where they went to school and whatever else, it no longer says Fordham University there. But you'll see it's in my video. Huh. So after I made my video, they came out and they changed the page. Very interesting. Watch this video. Will Donald Trump be the first Jesuit president? Okay. Uh, just wanted to make a real quick little video here. And uh, this is an interesting thing. Here's Wikipedia's page. And you go down here, early life, and it goes down through and it says, uh, uh, where's the thing? Trump attended Fordham University in the Bronx for two years. Fordham University is a Jesuit institution. So technically, no, he's not, maybe not a Jesuit priest, but he's Jesu Jesuit educated, which to me, you know, you might as well just be a Jesuit at that point. Uh, but I thought this was funny. He's Jesuit educated, but his religion is Presbyterianism. <laughs> sure, okay. You know, right. And uh, you say, well, you know, would he be the first Jesuit educated president? Well, no, actually, there was one before him. Um, here you have Bill Clinton. And you go down here, uh, college and law school years, Georgetown University. So Bill Clinton went to an even higher level of, you know, Jesuit education. So uh, I don't know that, you know, if there were others that, you know, had different Jesuit education and things before Clinton, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, here you have this thing. I showed this in another study, the list of alumni, or excuse me, Illuminati. I was going to say Illuminati. List of alumni of Jesuit educational institutions. Um, a lot of famous people and things like this. And you go down here to the C, letter C, and you have right there Bill Clinton, President of the United States, Georgetown University. Over here you take it down to T, and you have Donald Chump, uh, Fordham University. And see, that's how this whole scam works. You have this guy here. Oh, he's going to be a conservative Republican. Bill Clinton's a liberal Democrat. You know, Obama's liberal, so he's going to take over and he'll bring our country back. Uh, folks, the whole political thing is just absolute nonsense. Uh, it's, it's totally controlled. Uh, please don't get sucked into this who's going to run for president stuff and whatever else. These people use mind control on you. They'll, they'll lie to you and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to restore this. and It's time that we get some good politicians in there and things. And, you know, your carnal nature as a Christian is you want to have things return to the good old days, you know, kind of deal. And so you can get caught up in that stuff. And next thing you know, you're saying, well, you know, uh, I would vote for this guy because I think that he'd be better than, you know, candidate B would be better than candidate A, you know, and all this stuff. I mean, it's just like, come on. You know, it's ridiculous. Don't get involved in politics. Politics is a ridiculous bunch of nonsense. I mean, the Bible says that we are to pray for leaders and things and, and basically the politicians simply so that we can live a life of peace uh, and, you know, in, in all honesty and things like that. Uh, that's That's true. But to, to start to really, you know, get behind different people and, and you know, the Ron Paul scam and, and all this other stuff, don't fall for that stuff, brethren, you know, okay? I mean, Jesuit, Jesuit. They're both Jesuit educated. You know, the, the Catholic Church is, has taken over America. Um, again, there was a long time where Americans were able to really kick the Vatican hard and we're still able to we still have that freedom here and I'm thankful for that freedom but it's quickly eroding and uh, you know so look out for this so there you go uh, my stands have not really changed much over the years um, that's what you want to look for when you see a ministry uh, there are some things if I if I'm going to change my beliefs I will tell people about it I will repent for things that I've taught that were wrong, contrary to the scriptures. And, um, but I, there's a lot of things I'm not changing on. And, um, 
you know, going forward. Uh, and by the way, it's funny too, all the people out there that, oh, you're attacking Trump, you must be from MSNBC or, you know, get all these little insults and things. Um, I have been very rough on the whole Biden thing as well. Um, I came out and showed that the inauguration speech that he gave, it was all just faked. It was really some weird stuff, different camera angles, people would disappear and they, they must have done multiple takes on the whole thing. Uh, the, the Biden administration is a one of the creepiest, weirdest things I've ever seen. Uh, really strange. Um, and as far as this thing of, uh, I mean, who's going to run? You know, who's the Kamala, Kamala Harris's running mate or whatever else? I have no idea who they're going to put in. It should be announced soon, I guess. But there's some talk right now of possible the stock market could be crashing right now. But, you know, it's on the weekend, so they, that's when they would do it. So it'll be interesting tomorrow to see what happens with the whole stock market thing. Could come out of it and whatever, but I'm seeing some warning signs and, and things. So I have no idea. What's the next distraction going to be? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. But I'll tell you right now, which I've said this many times. I had a sermon actually way back in 2012 about the thing of who will win the next presidential election. Um... I think it was uh, Obama versus Romney, Mitt Romney back then. And I said, who's going to win? I'll tell you who's going to win. Whoever's worse for the country. <laughs> because God's judging this nation. So who's going to win the 2024 election? Whoever's the worst possible candidate. And I'll tell you right now, I think in some ways Kamala Harris would be a better uh, choice for the future for America. Because it would keep Christians angry and upset and and uh, praying and everything else. Donald Trump comes in, oh good, oh we can just kind of rest now and everything will be fine and, and uh, we'll get our country back and America, make America great again and all this other nonsense, the guy's lying to you, you know. So, um, stand by the Bible, brethren. Uh, that's your only chance for the future. Thank you for watching.